Hi, I'm Daphne Maxwell Reed, and you are watching Kendall Talks TV. Preview. What's up, everybody? It's your host, Kendall Tucker, and today I'm really excited about the interview we have. She played the role of Aunt Vivian in one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. She's also an artist, designer, author, and much more. Today we have Daphne Maxwell Reed. How are you doing, Daphne? I'm very well, thank you. Nice to meet you, Ken. Nice to meet you. I'm so glad we could talk, and I appreciate you sitting down with me. Uh huh. Anytime. You uh, staying safe during this coronavirus? I do. I walk, and I go up and down the stairs in my house. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, you've been in quite a few films, including my favorite, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. When did you decide you wanted to be an actor? I don't think I decided. I think uh, somebody asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said yes. Oh, it really? Was, it was organic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, you also did some modeling, correct? Yes, I did modeling while I was in college and after I got out of college. And um, then got discovered by Robert Conrad, who we just lost about a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, he discovered me and put me in a TV series he was shooting in Chicago. And uh, we become good friends and did a great job on that show. It was my first television show, although I had done commercials before and I had done a lot of narration. So I knew what I was doing, but I uh, had never had the opportunity to do it. And um, had a ball. And after that show, I moved to LA and he had another show calling, called, let me see. I can't remember the name of it. The first show was The Duke. The second show was A Man Called Sloan, I believe. And I played a bad guy and I was able to get an agent and life has been grand ever since. That is awesome. Um, I, I also read that you were the uh, first black woman to make the cover of Glamour magazine. That's huge. Back How did that feel? 1969. That had to feel that pretty great. To me too. <laughs> <laughs> that, had to, that had to feel pretty great. It was. I have a, I have a copy of it. I'll see if I can pull it up. Oh, heck yeah. Put it to you on the screen. That would be awesome. While you're talking, I don't want to stop you. Chicago is where um, you originally met your husband as well. Um, this, yes, I was already married to someone else in Chicago. Oh, <laughs> I met my first husband in college, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you guys have been married for what, almost 40 years now? Almost. It's 38 this December. That is so cool. That's awesome. And that's quite an achievement. Um, now, what's what would you say your secret is to a long, happy marriage? Um, humor, humor, trust, respect, uh, and friendship. Love. Love comes and goes, but friendship and respect are always there. That's good. That's good advice. Um, you know, another thing I I didn't realize until I did my homework is your husband, Tim Reed, is also an actor. Um, and I recognized him when I seen a picture of you two together. I'm like, I recognize him. And uh -huh. then I I uh, I seen that he played the role as Bray Campbell in the TV show Sister, Sister. Oh, that was some of the late, later things. He's been on about 20 different series. Yeah, I, when I, I Googled his name and He's been in tons of things. Oh, uh, yeah. He's sister Sister was one of the shows I watched growing up. So well, that's um, your age range. Your yeah. mom and dad saw him on WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, that's yeah, that would be more like it. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but at one point, I believe Sister Sister and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was being filmed at the same time, right? Yes. Um, I think it overlapped a couple of years. Where did the production take place for both those films? Were in they being filmed in the city? Both in Los Angeles, yeah. Okay, so you guys weren't really separated a lot during that time? Oh, we were separated a lot of the times, yeah. But it didn't make any difference. I mean, yeah. that's the life we live. Yeah. We're very used to it. I heard there's a lot of hours on, on set when you're filming. Um, it could be an all-day thing. When you're doing a sitcom, it's more of a nine to five kind of job. Oh, is it? Yeah, you only shoot on Friday. So you go to work on Monday from 10 till four or five and Tuesday and 
you get off about five or six. So, you know, doing a sitcom is different than doing film work. Hmm. When you do a film television show, then you can work maybe three days a week and it might be 14 hours, but then you don't work for four days and then you work again for two days. It's all depending on what the script is. Gotcha. Now, typically, how long did it take to film a single season of, of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? A single season? Like, yeah, a single season. How long does usually one take to film the whole season? We work for 20, we do 22 episodes and an episode is once a week. Okay. And you work maybe three or four weeks and you get a week off. So you start in August, you end about April. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, I know, I know The Fresh Prince wasn't your start to acting. You were actually in quite a few films before that. Um, but Fresh it's Prince kind of... Difference between films and shows. Films and shows. Okay. Films are movies. Okay. Were, were you in, were you in any movies before shows? Before Fresh Prince? You were, weren't you? Yes. I was in Protocol and TV movies. Um, yeah. Not feature films. Oh, okay. I Once upon a time when we were colored, I think I did that um, while we were doing Fresh Prince. See, I'm learning new things every day. <laughs> um, how'd you um, how'd you end up getting the role of Aunt Vivian? Auditioning. They had a call out for the character, and um, I had not gone on the first audition when the show first started. Um, because I had done about four back-to-back -back series and we had retired to the to a farm in Virginia. So I said, no, I don't want to do a sitcom with a rap star <laughs> at the time. And I'm going, no thanks. Yeah. I didn't audition for it, but then I saw it that fall and I said, oh, this is a cute show. And when they called, I said, I'll be there. <laughs> and it took about two weeks to audition. I had about five auditions and uh, the last three or four were with James Avery. So it was a wonderful pairing for me anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. James Avery was an amazing actor. Um, and an amazing person. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, now you came onto the show at the start of the fourth season, um, replacing the first Aunt Vivian who was played by Janet Hubert. I didn't replace. You didn't replace. I just had a job. She didn't. Did job. <laughs> now, did you ever, did you two ever have any communication be between each other? Have y'all ever talked? Never met her. You never met her? Mm -hmm. I was wondering if uh, she would reach out to you or if you guys have ever talked. No, no. <laughs> I now, just from her on uh, online as she makes comments. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know... I'm not really going to get it all into it, but I know she had issues with Will Smith, vice versa, and some of the cast. No idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get all that. But what I am going to ask you is, how would you like your fellow castmates? Did you find them easy to work with? It was like I had been there the whole time. They were just like family to me. Really um, wonderful, wonderful people. And um, warm. They welcomed me with open arms. They knew my work. They had seen me over the years on other television shows that I had done. Mm -hmm. So they knew uh, my work and my work ethic. And I was greeted with a couple of dozen red roses in my um, dressing room by Will and oh, just great. started working. And it was like we never missed a beat. That's awesome. It was just like jumping right into the family, right? Yeah, it was. And we are still family. Speaking of Will, um, did you know he was going to be one of the greatest actors of all time? No, but um, he wasn't when while we were working on Fresh Prince, and he got a lot of good tips from James Avery, yeah. and he became one of the best actors of all time. Yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite actors. Yeah, um, he's, he's done very well. He's a great businessman, too, because he's very smart. Very yeah. Smart. Did, now, you say you, you keep in uh, touch with all the cast members still? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we get together every once in a while. That's awesome. You know, it, it's crazy to me because I'm 26 years old. I'll be 27 this year. Um, I was born in 1993. The Fresh Prince has already been filming for three years by the time I was born. But growing up, that was my favorite show, even though even through high school, that was my favorite show. So 
Fast forward 30 years and you still have kids quoting the show and singing the theme song. It's crazy the impact that the show had on the whole world, like, because it still gets played at Nick at Night and stuff. I mean, and these young kids still know the show and it's insane. I've never seen a show like it. Oh, let me see. Oh, there's a couple. But um, our show, we're working on our third generation now. So uh, I've got grandkids of people who saw this show originally coming up to me and knowing that I'm Aunt Vivian. So. <laughs> that is That's so cool. Awesome. Now, you know, I would, everyone would love to see a reunion show, but I know it won't happen because it won't be the same without James Avery. Um, it won't be the same because you can't recapture the magic that you had at that time. Mm -hmm. The reception of shows that are shot in different eras have some sort of chemistry from that era that works then that and if sense. you translate it to another era it did may not work that makes sense now do you have any advice you could give to any young actors that or any young people that want to look into becoming an actor and uh, chasing that kind of field of work oh yeah i've got plenty of advice <laughs> <laughs> my the, first the bad advice. ugly <laughs> no my first advice is to also do something that makes you happy. Find a hobby where you can make a, make money and enjoy the, the process of doing that thing while you're studying acting or waiting for acting because actors have to wait to be chosen. Mm -hmm. And when you're waiting to be chosen, you have no control over your life. So you need to have something to do where you have control over your life. And uh, if that's acting in all the plays that are regional to you, that fine. Do something where you can earn a living while you're waiting to be an actor, waiting to be chosen to be an actor. Because there are so many very, very talented people out there who never get the opportunity to uh, get a job. It's... It's a tricky business and it has a lot to do with kismet and the stars aligning and <laughs> being in the right place at the right time. There's so much that goes into um, the selection of an actor that waiting to be chosen can be um, a little treacherous. Yeah. But you do get chosen. My husband told me something years ago and I repeat that to most of the people that I come in contact with as they start their journey in acting. And it's that you don't let the successes go to your head and don't let the failures go to your heart. That's good. Move on. That's great, That's great advice. <laughs> yeah, I know I've seen, I've read some stories, um, can't think of the names all top of my head, but some people, you know, some of these people that have chased this field of acting, they started off in their teenage years and they didn't get their their moment to shine till they're in their 40s 50s 60s i mean and then they really shined when it was their time but um i know it's uh like you said it's sometimes it's the right place at the right time and just being persistent yeah being persistent being uh understanding yourself learning yourself knowing what motivates you what moves you to separate to different emotions Reading, reading, reading. If you read novels, if you read the classics, you see how characters are developed and they help you in developing a character for mm. different things. Take classes online or wherever you are and enjoy the ride. That's great. That's great advice. Um, now, I also seen, stepping away from the, the topic of film, um, I also seen last year you released a cookbook. Was that last year? I think it was. Two years ago? Yeah, it was either the late 18 or early 19. Tell us about that. How can can people get their hands on that book still? Yeah, easily. Uh, it's all online. I have a website, which is my name, the whole Daphne Maxwell Reed.com. And it has um, the cookbook and the other books that I've written uh, from my photographic journeys. I'm also a photographer. And I take pictures of doors. And I write books about doors. I've seen that. And I watched the interview as well. And I think that's very interesting. Um, you know, 
the perspective you have um, about doors, how, you know, life is like doors. You got to go through them for opportunities, adventure. Um, and that's really interesting. That's really cool. Yeah, that's what I talk about when I talk to high school and college kids, when I do speeches to women's groups and things like that. I talk about the journey of life being more important than getting to the apex of your dream. You mm -hmm. can set a goal, but don't ignore the journey of getting to that goal because that's where the richness of life is, is in the journey. And that means noticing the small details of your life, the joys, the sadnesses, the people you meet. Just keep your head open for all the lovely little incidents that happen on the way to your goal because it'll make your goal really a wonderful achievement. But when you get there, you got to set another one. So enjoy the journey. That's awesome. That's really cool. Now, you know, acting, books, author, you also have a clothing line called Daphne Style. Yes. And um, I checked out some of your coats and designs and they're really cool. Um, the only issue I've seen was there was no like fly jackets for men. That's um, right. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering does your husband ever rock anything you've designed oh yeah he does yeah so you could put out a design for men if i wanted to <laughs> <laughs> they are really cool though i i do custom work so okay. Okay. it would take a lot of time for me to do custom for both men and women yeah so, i understand I, I select a style a year and that's the line that I do for that year. And I do, uh, I'm part of a fashion show that my husband has every year to raise money for his institute. He has a filmmaker's institute. And oh. we have a fashion showcase every year. And uh, I usually do a line and get my clients that way. That's awesome. Now, where does uh, that, where's that held, that event? In Virginia, in Richmond, Virginia. Okay, very cool. Um, you still have a, a, a facility up there, or you, that's where you live, Richmond, Virginia? Okay, yeah. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, I've seen, I like the whole, uh, the, the silk vibes, the flowers and everything, the colors. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he's got a nice gray and black one that I made for him for last year that he wore in the show. Oh, really? And I've made lots of clothes for him. I've made suits nice. and coats and all sorts of things. So. Oh, nice. How long have you been doing that for? Since I was nine years old. Oh, wow. Is this something that, you know, got passed down? Did your mom? Yeah, my mom was a great seamstress, and I learned all of the what, what I call hand arts, which is knitting and crocheting and embroidering and sewing and yeah. cooking. And I know how to do all that stuff. And sometimes okay. I sell it. There you go. You might as well, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Daphne, you know, I just want to say thank you. It was an honor to have you. I'm not going to hold you long, but I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to sit down with me. It really means a lot. And I, hopefully after this virus and in the near future, we can meet in person um, and talk again. May happen. You take care of yourself. Listen to the, the scientists. <laughs> <laughs> and the people who are giving you facts. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And pay attention. It really does make a difference. Yes, ma'am. Well, I appreciate it again. Thank you. Be well. Thank you.